go. So hello everyone, welcome back to the second Kaiwork online conversation this year. And uh, if it's the first time you join us, welcome. And uh, I would like to encourage you to turn on your camera and mute, mute your mic so we have a more engaging experience for our speaker. And uh, the logistics is that uh, for the first half an hour, it will be a, it will be a conversation and uh, we will record the, the conversation. And for today, uh, our speaker will first give us a short presentation and then we'll have questions that are on tape. And for the second uh, half of the hour, we will turn off the recording and turn into a more informal chat style. And for today, uh, I'm excited to have Professor Diego gomez Zara with us. So he's an assistant professor at the University of Notre Dame. His research focuses on how social computational system can help people organize and collaborate. His work has been at the forefront of computational social science, human computer in action, and network science. His recent publications include work in recommender systems, team formation, diversity, and virtual reality. And his research has won best paper awards at top conferences in HCI, including CHI, CSCDAP, and IUI. His dissertation research was awarded the 2020 Microsoft Research Dissertation Grant, the NSF's SES Dissertation Improvement, and the ING Group J. Richard Hackman Award. So let's welcome Diego to talk to us about assembly teams using recommender systems, the effects of algorithms and agency on team formation. Thank you, thank you all, and thank you for inviting me. This is my first time uh, at, this, at this group, so I'm very excited about uh, talking and of course learning from you. Um, I was just uh, talking to Professor Kuhn, like um, I have been moving around different communities, especially uh, like I think of my, my home, it's uh, CCW, but I'm very interested in these research questions about uh, groups, teens, and how they use technologies. Um, to have better performance. So this was part of my dissertation. We've kind of like finished data collection a few months ago and we're still like working on the analysis. So I'm, I'm very excited to present this um, preliminary results to you. And again, any questions, comments, uh, those are very welcome. So my work has been um, grounded on, on, on teams. So everyone here is part of a team, like in terms of organizations, universities, uh, research groups. Also, if we see families of groups, like we have different members working together for a specific task. And the problem sometimes is that um, there is exclusion. Like people probably um, trying to find the people who already know, like those who are familiar with, or like those who have certain compatibilities. But what happens with those uh, who cannot find a group like because they are not sharing those attributes or not necessarily having the social capital in order to be part of the group. And this problem in terms of how teams are formed, it's very important for, for work in terms of uh, how the team formation is conducted that will affect the communication process, collaboration, coordination, and so many things that happens um, after the team is formed. So the motivation is here to see how we can uh, start grounding and building teams um, like could be more compatible. And also since uh, all these groups and especially after the pandemic are working together through these technologies, uh, mobile phones, computers, Slack, all these technologies. So how the technologies can take a step forward in order to help people make better choices. So about all this motivation, kind of like my research work um, runs on this question. Uh, how can systems, social computational, social technical systems help people assemble better teams? So I want to present this particular experiment with the, um, trying to understand how the recommender system when people were looking for teammates to assemble a group, how the, depending on the team formation strategy, how the teams were going to be formed uh, what members were going to be part of the team and how also what's going to be the performance. And this is kind of like the challenge here. Like every time that we, if we think about the teams, the collaboration teams that we have, usually are people who already know, like we are very well with certain familiarities, maybe it's an affiliation, we went to grad school together, etc. So we are confronting with these biases and also just like this homophily forces. So again, like how existence could just take a step forward and just say how you can 
for example, identify a team member who probably it will be a better fit or like you can just work with him, but like you don't know him or her precisely. So uh, we were a little inspired by like um, all these uh, interventions in terms about how we can help systems to reduce uh, bias, especially uh, given like all the data probably has certain bias and have some restructural uh, inequities. So it's just like how we can uh, after that, understand better how the results or like recommendations are displayed and help people just like to consider people who probably um, will not rank so high because all of these inequalities, inequalities before. But if we include this criteria, how, to, how the user's behavior will change. So for example, here you can see there's a list of recommendations. Like these are the people who you could be part of a team. Um, and what happens if we just say, well, based on certain diversity criteria, we will just start giving more bonuses to those who probably are scoring four, fifth, sixth, but like they're very close to be second uh, or first. So just like considering like how much diversity that person could add to the group, maybe this person should be higher in the list. So this is kind of like the example here. For example, let's say when people are forming teams, like, okay, this is like, how the results are displayed. Matthew, Kelsley, Brandon, and Tanya are displayed. And of course, like you can see, there are some inequalities here, like white people are on the front, African-American on the bottom. And this is just based on what the user requested. Maybe I was just, like the user was requesting, I want someone who has this kind of expertise. But what happens if the system is able to recognize these differences and say, well, maybe if you consider like having other perspectives into your team, maybe that will increase the performance. So in that sense, we're just giving more points to those who individuals who, again, scored third or fourth, but like could be first or second, given the different criteria selection. So what we did here uh, in order to test this idea, uh, we ran an experiment um, with 400 uh, people and we designed this two by two between subject experiment and we run um, a laboratory experiment recruiting people who work online. So this is kind of the timeline for each one of these sessions. We use a platform to form teams called My Dream Team. I will explain a little bit later in the next slides. And the idea here is like people, uh, we randomly uh, brought people for a specific session. They need to form teams. The conditions were related to how they were going to form those teams. After they formed a team, we asked them, we ran a Qualtrics survey and we asked them how um, was the experience of assembling their team? Like, how are your perceptions, your expectations? Then uh, because of the pandemic, we had to do everything on Zoom. So every then we have like sessions with 50 students um, and people from, from the local area um, on a Zoom session. So then when, when they formed teams, we created breakout rooms and then they work for 30 minutes on a specific creativity task that I will explain to. And then we asked them at the end, how was um, your experience? And also we graded their projects to see how their performance was. So um, a little bit like description of what they did. Um, we use this platform called My Dream Team. The idea is like to assist people to self-assemble teams. Imagine this is kind of like an online dating app. So people are, are asking for specific attributes and then the system will provide recommendations for team members. And the idea is like people organically will assemble teams there. So depending on like what I want, like I want someone who has these particular skills or some people who are similar to me or different from me, like I can just select all those criteria and then assemble the team. So Basically, the pipeline here is that people at the beginning complete a survey. We assess their social and human capital. I was asking a lot of questions related to the leadership, creativity, um, like who they know already. So we're trying to understand their, their social group. Then once they complete the survey, they start searching for team members and they, they, specif they specify at least two criteria, like what aspects are you looking for? Most of our uh, participants look for ex expertise and sometimes they look for uh, those who already know or like social contacts. And also finally, this is how the results are displayed. And then the idea is just like based on the algorithm we use, people will see a specific list of uh, recommendations. And uh, yeah, a little bit like what we ask, demographic information, price skills, uh, like a lot of what, uh, human capital attributes and also social capital. Mm -hmm. And the idea was like basically, uh, trying to re respond and return like what users ask for. So the idea is basically depending on the preferences and the combination of these ones, 
people will assemble, like will prioritize certain attributes more than others. And then the user, like the algorithm was very simple in this sense. Like it was just returning uh, this combination, like these product sums, like, uh, like which one of these users fit better with your search query. And then this is like a network process in my head. It's just like how people start searching and then they start inviting others and people will say yes or no. And as long as, long as like they say yes or no, like they will start assembling these things. So, um, how we score diversity and what we did here is just like depending for um, at least for this particular case we have uh, gender race ethnicity age and price skills and all of this information was self-reported and the idea here is like using um, we use plot index to measure categorical variables just like to see the proportion of different values in a specific attribute in a group so you can see like the visual representations like if it's very low all of them will have the same value. All of them are circles. If it's moderated, like you will see, like the group has certain diversity. Like some people are like circles, squares, triangles, and um, pentagons. When it's maximum, it's just like everyone has a different value for that specific attribute. So we use gender, race, and ethnicity for this particular one. And then coefficient of variation, the idea was like to see the dispersion, like how much uh, different, like in terms of expertise or age was in a group. So if it's minimum, all of them have the same age. If it's moderate, like, like we have this distribution, like there are people who are older, people who are younger. If it's maximum, it's just like there will be one person who, let's say it's the oldest one, the other ones it's like younger, or like could be in terms of project skills. There is one expert and the other ones are apprentices. So. The task was basically we asked them um, to design recruitment materials for the American Cancer Society. We asked them like in 30 minutes, you need to design uh, uh, like materials so they could recruit um, volunteers who can drive uh, people from their homes to the hospital for their treatments. Um, and then we asked them to do this on Google Slides and we recruited also judges um, who can evaluate all these projects according to a scale that I will describe soon. So this is the, the interesting part about this experiment. Like we use two dimensions to create all the conditions. So on the left, you see agency, like if people were able to choose or not their team members. And also on the top, you will see the second one, algorithm diversity. If there was a criteria specifying the diversity must be encouraged. So if there is no diversity and no agency, so people cannot choose their teams, this is random assignment. Like basically there was no criteria, we just assigned them uh, randomly and how it was. If we have diversity as a priority in the team assembly process, but they couldn't choose, we use an algorithm in order to maximize all the, like, the possible combinations, find the ones who increase the diversity of those teams. And we use a genetic algorithm. So the idea was just like to maximize the, the diversity in each team. And this was like a hard problem to solve, but we developed the algorithm. Um, and, and basically after this, their algorithm will just give us an output. And we use the metrics just like to form those teams. When they have an agency, so people could choose their team members, but there was no diversity encouraged. Um, this was like the normal uh, recommender system based on the query of uh, whatever you ask for, this is what I found. And this is like trying to match whatever they ask for, and this is how it will be displayed. But if diversity was encouraged in this case, we will take the, the score that they used, at least like the query score, like how, fit, uh, how well they fit with the specific search query. But also we're trying to give bonuses to those individuals who increase the diversity of the team. So for example, if I am a team with two men, uh, male, I'm sorry, male participants, one female participant will increase the diversity of our team because we lack that attribute. So that will be, that person will be like in the top of the list. And the idea also is just like to reconcile with what the user asked for. So based on this kind of interventions, uh, we recruited about um, like, well, that's the precise number, 386 participants. Um, the proportion, we have a lot of female participants, 76 uh, male participants and fine non-binary. Uh, we're trying to diversify our pool. So we have students from, from uh, the university and also we recruited community members, uh, people who are part of the staff, people who live in the city. Uh, we're trying to replicate or trying to be respectful with the um, demographics here, like according to the US census and also uh, many of them were identified with the United States. We didn't ask citizenship. So we asked them just like with which country they identify. Um, 72 people like identify with an international like international um, affiliation. So after 
running this experiment, we, we, we could assemble 52 teams and you can see the numbers here, 21 in the first condition, 20 algorithm teams, 25 sample assembled teams using their normal Madrid team and 21 using this diversity one. So what we found here is that um, we measure uh, like identity diversity and this is basically gender, uh, race, ethnicity and age. Combining those attributes, we calculate in a score, like how much uh, diverse was the team. So you can see here that in those conditions that agency was allowed, the diversity scores were very low. So, and this is uh, this is kind of confirms like what we know in terms of prior research, that when people choose, uh, there is a strong homophily effect, like people trying to meet people who are ready, no, or, sorry, like they're similar to them. And what we found when we're just like digging in like the like the metrics is that people trying to meet with others who have the same uh, gender. So that was the main effect. When we try to measure like the cognitive diversity, and this is like, um, like the diversity in terms of all the skills of the team, uh, we didn't see any differences among like the conditions for, for the one the, the algorithm was trying to maximize it and one people trying to find other team members kind of like tells us like people are very good like in order to find people who have the skill that is missing in the group. What is interesting here is that uh, at the moment of seeing that the performance of each team, um, I'm sorry, this is diversity. So you can see here like the algorithm maximized diversity as much as it could. And the difference was significant compared to when people were just doing by themselves. And when people do it by themselves, like the diversity is very low. So this is what like the trade-off like most people have, for example, managers. They could just try to create the most diverse team possible. Uh, but if you allow them, for example, students or employees just to do it, the, the diversity will be really, really low. And even if they're encouraged, like probably unconsciously, they will try to meet those who are similar to them. So now I'm jumping to performance. And this is kind of like the interest part. Those teams who were the most diverse and those were assembled by the algorithm, those were the worst. Like those that had the worst performance among all the conditions. And we were like, we all know if that should surprise us or not, because it's kind of like diversity, you know, so like this double edged sword, like it's very hard for teams who are diverse to work together, especially at the beginning. So they have very low performance. And but the, the interesting part here is like you can see in the fourth condition when they have agency. And we like, changed the algorithm so people could just team up with those who were more like different from themselves. People have more control of that process and the performance must was much, much better. And it was much better even like the random teams or like those who they can assemble. The, the differences are not significant. Probably it's just the terms in terms of the sample size that we have. Probably we should recruit more and have more teams. When you ask us like, what could be the explanation of this? We, we just calculated and run all this analysis based on the surveys. And what happens here is like the communication process, like communication, and this is degree, like how many times individuals uh, spoke when they were working together. When in the diversity condition, when there was no agency, so they were forced to work together in a diverse group, communication was very low. Probably people didn't understand well how they, they couldn't start the conversation, how they could um, like start working together. And probably that took longer than probably if you have people who are very similar, who already know each other. So communication was main part of this, just like could explain the performance. This also explained the team validity in that sense, like people didn't want to work together after working or doing this particular task. And this also affects like the total score, like the total performance of the team. So we're still working on this, but kind of like our takeaways is first that Agency, when people can choose, definitely affects negatively um, um, diversity. So if people have no guidance, just like they can do whatever they want, probably they will team up with people who are very similar to them, who already know, and probably those who they already know are similar to them already. So it's very hard just to fight against the homophily in that sense. But if the other extreme is like if we team up people who uh, are very different, like there we have the extremes together. Uh, it's hard also for them just like to work together. Like the process of communication, the collaboration takes longer. And we didn't have a specific role, for example, for mentorship or leadership. So in that sense, it will take for those teams to work um, better, like it will take longer. So what kind of we were interested here is like, well, just by allowing them to choose their teammates, but also changing the criteria, how the results were displayed, that 
influenced the team formation process, how the composition was going to be. And also they were, they felt more committed or like probably they were able to communicate more since they were part of that decision process. So we still like working on this. And of course, like it could be um, interesting to dig in more in the data, but I think it's very interesting to at least discuss this situation and how this could affect like teams, like student teams or like um, project teams. So with that, I, I will be happy to hear from your reactions, questions, concerns, everything. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Diego, for sharing this very interesting work with us. And uh, I think we can have some conversation on this work. And one thing that really stood out to me in your results, I think there were two things that I find really surprising. Uh, one is, if you if you if you look at the diversity factor of different conditions, like I was surprised to see. I mean the the diverse MDT condition. Like, Dale, can you go back to the yeah the slide where you where you show? Yeah, uh, next one. Next this one. one next, no, the, the the one that compares the diversity factors of different conditions. Yeah, that one. Okay. Yeah, so we see we see the diversity MDT condition has a. Pretty, pretty significant improvement on diversity over the normal MDT, mm -hmm. but it's still lower than even the random teams. So I wonder if you have any insights on what actually happened there. Like right. we see people, for example, because my understanding is you manipulate which is the, the orders of the recommendations, right? Mm -hmm. So do you see people still are more unlikely to choose someone, let's say who's different from them, even if they're a top recommendation? Or are yeah. there any yeah. other reasons to expand this? That's a good question. And I think um, it, it kind of like, it's a little bit higher, not significantly different. And it's still lower, for example, compared to random and even with the one that the algorithm provided. So I think, um, and this is kind of like the, 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 the questions that we have. So for example, we didn't prime people. Like we didn't tell them right up, like straightforward, like, oh, you know, if your team wants someone who is, um, like different from you, maybe like you can have a better performance or like previous research shows that diversity is very good. Like we didn't prime anyone. So this is like naturally what people did. So kind of shows that for sure, like people still have this um, homophily effect. Like they will try to meet with people or team up with people who are similar to them. Kind of like just by changing the order of the list made us effect, increase it a little bit. And mm -hmm. the question here will be like, well, what happens if we start continue adding more cues? For example, either we prime people like, oh, you know, like diversity helps. So in that sense, people right. could be more right. conscious, right? Mm -hmm. And if people can consciously engage with that and say, oh yeah, you know, like I, I, I have choices and I could choose, but also I should take into consideration this. I see, yeah, that's, that, that, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think, and building up on that, so you are talking about how you can help people, educate people about the effect and the, advantage, the advantages of having a diverse team. Mm -hmm. So I wonder, do you think that's also a part of the factor that played into the, the difference in performance among those teams, right? Because... Mm -hmm. This, or or do, 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 do you think there are opportunities, for example, we can provide more effective training to help people to be more prepared and more ready to work with folks from diverse backgrounds? Right. Yeah, I agree. I mean, uh, that's kind of like um, one impression, especially seeing these very diverse groups, like they weren't able to start a conversation. So, um. I guess that the main point here is like they really need help mentoring and either there's external leader who can help them just like to engage with the work or the tasks that they're uh, commanded to do. Um, so um, I think um, definitely cannot work alone. Like if it's just we bring people different from different backgrounds, it's like, okay, let's let's start working together. That's not going to work. And that's the kind of like the problem. Um, in terms about how society sometimes conceives diversity in organizations. Like, mm -hmm. right, people should in, like bring and recruit diverse people, fine. But like, what happens after that? It's just like, how you can engage is like be inclusive, like trying to bring and let that team work together. And I think that's something that we'll still need to discuss. Yes. Mm -hmm. So another question of mine is, because you, you, test, you, you test this on a, on a cre creative task. So I wonder like, 
what do you think are some customers that this approach will be best suited for? And how do you envision the findings will generalize to different customers? Yeah, that's a good point. So we use um, creativity because um, our creativity task mostly uh, people could engage in terms of our discussion or like creating ideas. And in mm -hmm. that sense, they could just come up with a result. Like it's true, like for example, for other tasks, like for example, additive tasks, let's say you need to build a uh, like a wall or something like, right? You need to just put brickets. Like it doesn't matter if the team is diverse, like you just need hands for that. But in this case, um, particularly like, for example, all the kind of tasks related to idea generation and like the, the finding of novel results, et cetera. And it's, I think what will fit there is like, for example, research teams, uh, student teams also, they need to work together in like specific theoretical or conceptual challenges. And that's something like they require. Um, and I think that would be an interesting path, like just trying to identify better, like in what cases, like technologies like this could help like real teams in the offices or organizations or in institu educational institutions. Yeah. Yes. And uh, another thing I've been thinking about when hearing your talk was that uh, I was thinking about how the format, the medium, and the activity of work actually is changing rapidly, which I think is the central theme of this group. So what do you think are the biggest implementation, impl implications of your work in terms of how we think about designing the future of work, what the future of work will look like in terms of a task, in terms of a context, in terms of a setting, so we can better accommodate the dynamic nature of those teams? Yeah, that's a great question. I think a lot of, like we are working in like many communities. So uh, the big challenge, I guess, is uh, trust building because um, while people are in the same place, they could engage. And again, there are like different components. Like people can move their bodies. They can use your hands, expressions, facial expressions are um, easier and people can just look around. And that sense that helps creativity, that helps um, like building relationships uh, in our experiment was kind of sad, like we had to do it online. We originally planned and submitted all these proposals just to do it in our lab. Uh, but because of pandemic, we didn't have the chance to do it in person. So basically it was just like a breakout room for like the, the four participants were in each quadrant. And they kind of like, it was hard for them because they had to engage with the like conversation. Also at the same time, they need to use the Google slide to work together. So it was kind of tedious and all these things are important to discuss it's like how people can engage with their body language how people can engage uh, like in this kind of like like their bodies can visually express ideas more things um and for a reason i'm kind of excited a little bit with like vr it's just like vr could be answered for that um yes but, it's, but yeah that's another part of the discussion yeah yes yes i think those are all very hard questions right i was thinking about the formats as you said all, all those different rich moda interaction modalities right. that we have in the real life, I think would probably help participants or workers from different diversity backgrounds to better connect with each other or right. will accelerate the process in which they build bond with each other. And I agree with you. I think the exploring the use of VR in that space will be really exciting. And uh, with that, I would like to open up the floor to the audience. Do you have any question for Diego? Any points, comments? Hey, Diego, this is Brian Bailey from uh, Illinois. Could you talk? Nice to meet you, finally. Hi, how are you nice doing? doing? Could you talk more about your task outcome measure? Yeah. So well, maybe actually, you could put that. Could you put that slide up for the for the outcome measures? Yeah, this one. Yeah. So I wasn't sure, like. Like what? How did you measure performance? So, how, so yeah. So I mean, how how was performance measured? So we follow the like the 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 rubric from the teams dating, like the the speed dating for teams. Like when you measure like originality, novelty, uniqueness, um, simple. Like how simple is the message? We use those metrics. I have a slide. Unfortunately, I don't have it in this slide deck. But basically, um. What we found is that um, the, the diverse teams were very good with originality and novelty. Like those were for reason the scores go up so far, and at least in, in, the, in the, the other one, like the fourth. Um, but uh, simpleness is just like the one that at least the normal, the normal in which you have a homogeneous team, like that one has a better performance. 
Well, I, I, I mean, I agree. Yeah, I mean, those are pretty common outcome measures, but I, I would also be curious if you just measured how good it was. So sometimes originality and novelty reward sort of really, um, you know, crazy, unrealistic ideas, right. and not things that are like practical and, and, and doable. So I don't know if you had a measure of that, but that might be something that you would want to also uh, look at. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, we're trying to be very realistic with the task. And I think like just by observing some of the coders observations like um, originality went up, for example, I, one case was that there was a group where it has a Hispanic um, uh, person and that uh, like she offered it to say, oh, I, I can just put the same stuff in Spanish on the other side. And it's like, okay. So they had the materials in both languages and just like with different kind of um, Kind of cues and i think that one of the the, the like the judges like like it that thing mm -hmm. but uh, we don't have like particularly something like uh or like we didn't observe like oh this is very unrealistic like um like it, because the task was kind of you need to recruit volunteers so they can bring their patients from i don't know somewhere in illinois in chicago to the northwestern memorial uh, hospital so yeah. We're trying to keep it in that way, but it's true like we could just explore and dig in more like okay like uh, why for example this particular ones were so high in, in originality. What, uh, one other question is how, how sensitive are your results to your choice of algorithm, do you think? So um, do you, you tweak your algorithm or changed it or used, you know, used a different one. Do you think you get different outcomes? Yeah, and I guess like what we didn't do and probably that will fit be like the baseline or like on our fifth condition would have been like, what happens if we, the algorithm did it the opposite, just like trying to form the most um, homogeneous teams, right? So maybe they're not the same as like the normal my dream team, but um, kind of like um, how sensitive it is, just like we saw the differences in terms of all the compositions. So um, what is challenging, at least for us, is like to see the partial link between, for example, what they saw on the screen and like how that changed their, their in, in, for example, the invitation. So we're working on that a little bit, like what happened with the trace data. Uh, yeah, we, but I don't have an answer, like, for example, right, like, if we did this, like, it will go up or down, like, 10%. That will be very interesting to know. We found, I mean, some, some of our work, we found very strong placebo effects. So mm -hmm. if you told a team that was formed randomly that they were formed by the algorithm, mm -hmm. they tend to perform just as well as the, as the teams who are actually formed by the algorithm. Right. So that would be something you could you could play with as well as telling teams that they were formed by the algorithm to maximize diversity, right. even though they were formed randomly. Right. That would just be something to just yeah. study in the so, future. So we, we thought about a lot of that because we didn't tell them why what's going on. So for example, um, like these two first conditions randomly or like the algorithm, uh, they didn't know if an algorithm like didn't like for maximizing something. So they just saw the names of the team members and that was all. Same when they use the the normal my dream team so they could choose their team members like they there was no cue just like oh yeah these teammates are sorted according to with this criteria so that's what we would like to understand is like what happens if users see that how how the performance will or like their behavior will change but we try to keep it just like at this level so we can have precise insights about like how the specific mechanism is just like bringing people together and uh, that will change the performance yeah, but yeah thank you. Uh, yeah thank you yeah, thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Diego, for the really nice conversation. And uh, our speaker for next week will be Alvita Otley from Washington University in St. Louis, same time, Thursday, uh, 11 a.m. ET. So please, please join us. And uh, I will now stop recording so you can join us for an informal conversation. So everyone in the audience, feel free to unmute yourselves. <laughs>